United Africa. Coming to Ghana is merely postponed. Political theorist and revolutionary Kwame Nkrumah made a name for himself in 1949 when he founded the Convention People's Party and called for civil disobedience. The British colonial authorities threw him in prison. This was, paradoxically, the beginning of his political rise, and his party won the 1951 elections. Nkrumah was released from prison to triumphant celebrations in the streets of Accra and became prime minister of an autonomous government. Five years later, he consolidated his power in new general elections, winning three quarters of the seats and forcing London to concede the country's independence in 1957. The Gold Coast became Ghana, a member of the Commonwealth and the first of Britain's African colonies to gain majority rule independence. But relations with the British Crown quickly soured after Ghana became a republic in 1961. As president, the Redeemer, as he was called, turned eastwards to the Soviet Union and China. He was ready to welcome any subversive movement and quickly became a potential adversary to Britain. But in Ghana too, the tide was turning against him, dissenting voices were stifled and the Krumah became the target of at least four assassination attempts. Perhaps the pinnacle of Nkrumah's career came in October 1965, when he hosted most African heads of state in Accra for a summit of the OAU, a precursor to the African Union. This would be his last opportunity to explain his pan-Africanism to his peers. The fierce anti-colonialist advocated cooperation between all people of African descent and for the political union of an independent continent. Nkrumah was overthrown in a military coup in 1966 on his way to China. The father of Ghanaian independence never returned to his homeland in his lifetime, living out the rest of his life in Guinea, where Sokul Touré gave him refuge. He died in 1972 in Romania, far from his beloved continent. A special emissary to Ghana had told him why.